Hey everybody, this is Patrick JMT and I'm partnering with Chegg. And here we're gonna talk about exponential growth and decay. And we're, we're gonna approach this at the beginning from a calculus perspective. If I would say if you're taking algebra or pre-calculus, you know, maybe watch, maybe you'll learn something. But certainly the examples that I saw of would be something very typical of an algebra or pre-calculus course. So definitely if you just wanna to skip to the examples and see how some of them are worked, by all means, don't let me stop you. So we'll talk about what's known as the, the law of natural growth and the law of na uh, natural decay, and also what's known as the relative growth rate. Okay, so this is the idea to get us started. So in many situations, the rate of change of a quantity is proportional to its size. So to me, like a perfect example, one that I think about, um, you know, I'm getting a little older, I'm worried about my retirement. Suppose your account earns interest at, you know, a certain percentage per year. So suppose your, your account earns interest at 10% per year. The total change on the amount in the account um, will depend not just on the, the interest rate, it's going to depend on the amount in the account, right? So maybe you're earning 10% per year interest. If you got a dollar in there, you ain't going to have much at the end of the year, much in interest. But if you got 10 million in there, you're probably like, great. So again, the idea is that the rate of change, it, it, it depends on the amount that's there, and also some constant, which we call k, which is known as the relative growth rate. So if y is the amount, it says the change in that amount with respect to time, well, it's going to be, you're going to have to multiply by some constant, and also you have to take into account the original amount. And there's a tons of situations in, in the real world where this is exactly what happens. You know, maybe, maybe, um, like wildlife or bacteria or something, if there's, you know, maybe unlimited resources, things will grow according to this for quite a while. So k, again, it's a constant known as the relative growth rate. If k is greater than zero, we have what's known as the law of natural growth, right? Because if k is greater than zero, the rate of change will be something positive. And if k is less than zero, well, the, you're gonna, the rate of change will be negative, and you have what's known as the law of natural decay. Okay, so for you calculus people, can you think of a function that satisfies this equation? The change in y with respect to time equals k times that function y. And again, what this says is here, it says the derivative of the function is the same function multiplied by a constant. So can you think of a function whose derivative is itself maybe you know, up to a constant. Well, suppose we have, you may remember that the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Well, I could put some constant in there, maybe call, I call it k. Well, the derivative of this function by the chain rule, we would have e raised to the power of k times x times k. But again, I can write this, I can rewrite this by saying it's the change in y, we'll assume, um, we're using x here now instead of t, but it says the change in y with respect to x, it's equal to k times the original function y. So notice this function satisfies this, this differential equation, and it turns out that's the only one. Okay, so you can have some initial amount in there, um, so this will still be true as well, and so for when we have the change in y with respect to t is equal to k times y, it says solutions are going to be of the form. It says our, we have to have e raised to the k times t multiplied by y sub 0, and that's typically the initial value of the population. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. These can be a little long and a little tedious, but we'll try to get through them as quickly as possible. Okay, so a bacteria culture grows with a constant relative growth rate, and the bacteria count was, we'll say, 600 after two hours and 19,200 after eight hours. So we wanna know a few things. What's the relative growth rate? Again, so we're looking for our relative growth rate, which we said is our value k. So we're trying to solve for k here. And part B, we wanna know what's the initial size. So how many did we start with? What's the number after four hours? And what's the rate of growth after four hours? Okay, so a lot of things here. So we know that the amount, we'll say, I'm gonna rewrite it, it's the initial amount multiplied by e to the kt. So I'm using a slightly different notation, but the same idea. So this is the initial amount. 
Well, we don't know the initial amount, right? That's one of the one of the questions. That's part B. But we know a few things. So we know that the count was 600 after two hours. So it says the total amount, we'll have 600. We still don't know the initial amount. We would have e to the k times, that was after two hours. So e to the k times two. I'm gonna write that as 2k. And then we also know that there's 19,200 after eight hours. So we would have 19,200 equals the initial amount multiplied by e to the 8k. So we're trying to solve for this relative growth rate. We're trying to find k here. And the way that we can do this is we can do some division. So imagine you take 19,200 and divide it by 600. So I'm taking this value and dividing it by this value. Well, I would have this equation or this expression divided by this expression. So I would have the initial amount multiplied by e to the 8k divided by the initial amount multiplied by e to the 2k. So now we can use this to actually solve for k. So let's see, 19,200 divided by 600, that's just equal to 32 on the left. And notice this is the whole point. The initial values cancel out. We've got e to the 8k over e to the 2k. We subtract exponents, so we have e to the 6k. Still trying to solve for k, so I can take the natural logarithm of both sides. If I take the natural logarithm of the right side, Remember, we can use properties of logarithms. The 6k comes out front times the natural logarithm of e. But the natural logarithm of e is just equal to 1. So we can get rid of that. And then we can simply divide both sides by 6 and get our value of k. Now, this is up to your instructor. Um, you, may, you may just want to leave it in this form, the natural logarithm of 32 divided by 6. You may also want to approximate it. So if we approximate it, and that's what I'm going to use here. I'm getting 0 0.5, I don't know, how about 58? We'll just go to two decimal places. So that's the relative growth rate. That would be our solution for part A. We've now got the relative growth rate. So a lot of times this trick of, of finding two equations, doing some division, that's something that you'll use. Okay, so now for part B, we've got A equals the initial amount multiplied by E to the K. We set our k value, again, I'm going to approximate it as 0 0.58 times t. Okay, so we don't know, again, the initial amount, but I think we can use our previous information to, to find that. So we knew that after, let's go back to this, this part, we knew after two hours we had 600 bacteria. So we've got 600, I still don't know the initial amount, but that's going to be when t equals 2. So this will be e raised to the power, let's see, 0.58 multiplied by 2, what is that? 1.16. So let's see, we can take 1.16 and raise that, uh, we'll take e to that power, and then divide by it. So this, this number, so e raised to the 1.16 is roughly equal to 3.19. So again, I'm definitely using some approximation here. You may want to be exact. Ask, your again, your instructor. Because you will get some rounding error. So e raised to the 1.16, that's 3. Point, we'll say, 19. So if I divide both sides by that, we would have 600 divided by 3.19. That's gonna be our initial amount. So 600 divided by 3.19. This is roughly equal to 188. I'm just gonna round it off to a nice whole number here. So now we've got the model. So again, I'm using a lot of rounding. You may or may not wanna do this. Again, talk to, talk to your instructor. So we'll say the initial amount was roughly 188. We've got e to the k, which is 0 0.58 times t. So now I know my model. Yes. So now I can start using this. This is going to be this is going to be useful. Let's see. What's the number of bacteria after 4 hours? So after 4 hours, it says the amount after 4 hours. We would just take this uh, this model and replace the t with a 4. So let's see 0. Uh, 0. 0.58 multiplied by 4, 2.32 makes sense. 
We'll take e to that and multiply it by 188. And I'm getting the amount to be uh, equal to, I'm getting 19 or 1913.03. And again, we could roughly estimate that to be 1913. Last question, what is the rate of growth after four hours? Okay, so the rate of growth, this is our function. The rate of growth would be the change in the amount with respect to time. So this is now the last part. Well, we're just taking a derivative now of our function. So we would have 188 multiplied by e to the 0.58t. But then we have to use the, uh, the chain rule. So the derivative of the exponent will be 0 0.58. So it says the change in amount with respect to time. And let's even just write this as a prime. So 188 multiplied by 0 0.58. I'm getting that to be 109.04. Still multiplied by e to the 0 0.58 t. Well, the rate of change after four hours, I'll let you all compute this one. We would have e raised to the power of 0 0.58 multiplied by 4, and that'll give you the, uh, the rate of change after 4 hours. So, okay, um, just a lot of little things here, you know, just a little bit of algebra at the beginning. I mean, mostly it was all algebra, right, and plugging in numbers. Not a lot of calculus until we got to part D. So exponential decay. Let's get rid of this part. Exponential decay. So suppose we have some isotope, we'll call it isotope X, and it has a half-life of 20 days. So again, all that means is after 20 days, you would have half left over compared to what you started with. Okay, so it says if you start with 100 grams of isotope X, how long will it take until 30 grams remain? So again, the amount equals the initial amount, e to the kt. Well, we know, we know the initial amount, right? That's 100. So the thing that's missing here is we just need to figure out this value of k. That's our goal. Well, I know that after 20 days, so when t is equal to 20, so I would have e raised to the power of 20 times k, it says I'm going to have half the amount left. Well, if I started with 100, I would have 50 left over. And the same thing as before, we'll just solve for k. So I can divide both sides by 100. 50 over 100 is a half, e to the 20 times k. We can take the natural logarithm of both sides. Just like before, the 20k would come out front, we would have the natural logarithm of e left over, which is just 1. And then we can divide. So natural logarithm of 1 half divided by 20, that's going to be our value of k. So let's see, uh, 0.5, the natural logarithm, divided by 20. I'm getting this to be roughly equal to negative 0, 0.0, I'm going to go a little further here, 3, 3, 5. And again, it makes sense, right? Things are getting, things are decaying. So notice our k value is negative. In our first example, the bacteria population was growing, so our k value is positive. So that's one little quick check. You can even just make sure if you're doing things right. You know, is if, if it's decay, k should be negative. If it's growth, your k should be positive. All right, so now we're in business. I've got my model. I know that the initial amount was 100. e to the k, which I now know is negative 0 0.035 times t. I want to know how long it'll take uh, until 30 grams remain. Well, I want the total amount to be 30 on the left side now. And again, we're just doing the same thing as before. So let me copy all this down. I can divide both sides. So 30 divided by 100 would be, um, what's that? Just uh, 3 over 10 equals e to the negative 0.035t. We can take the natural logarithm of both sides. On the right side, we would be left with our negative 0.035t. And last but not least, just divide. So the natural logarithm of 3 tenths divided by negative 0.035. And that's going to be our value for t. So again, I'll let you simplify that down because I don't have it in front of me. But that's all there is to it in this case. You're just... you. In, in these questions, you just need to figure out the initial amount, and you need to figure out k somehow. 
In this example, we were given the initial amount. In the first one, we weren't, but we were able to go back and solve for those. Again, be careful about estimating. I've seen some, um, some textbooks where like estimating is fine. I've seen others where they wanna leave it exact because when you plug it back in, a lot, of time, a lot of times things might simplify down and clean up a little bit. But again, ask your instructor or do what you think is, is the best in that situation. And again, you know, these are models, but if you can keep things exact, right, you'll, you'll have a, a much more accurate model.